Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and these are my first impressions of the Apple Watch. Now, a lot of people got to go to the actual Apple event and get some hands-on time footage. I wasn't cool enough to get some hands-on time with the watch, so I'll link some right below that like button and also be showing some in this video. Now, people keep asking me about this watch because, you know, it's really exciting. It's a new Apple entry into a new product category, wearable stuff, which is really interesting. But after about a day or so later, I, I just have really mixed feelings about it. So for those who haven't seen, the Apple Watch was announced yesterday alongside the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, which I'll also be covering. And the watch itself, you know, it's square, it's made of metal, it's a little bit thick, it's not too flashy, it doesn't really stick out when you look at it at first, but it has some very interesting software features. But for the hardware, it's actually three different versions of the watch. It's the Apple Watch, the Apple Watch Sport, and the Apple Watch Edition edition or something. The standard Apple Watch is a stainless steel body, has a pretty standard set of bands and a sapphire crystal display. The Apple Watch Sport has a lighter weight aluminum body since you're gonna be running around with it a lot and these colorful rubber bands. And the edition is coated with 18 karat gold on the body and some fancier bands. So that's the clear fashion statement one. And all this hardware is actually really personalizable, which is awesome. So Apple seems to be realizing one size does not fit all here, especially with the new iPhones. And then with this watch, there's actually a small size and a large size of the watch for every variation. So the small size has a 1.5 inch display and the large size has a 1.65 inch display. For reference, the Moto 360 I'm wearing has a 1.56 inch circular display. So right about in the middle. So, you know, people with larger wrists tend to gravitate towards the larger watch and people with smaller wrists, probably a lot of women will want to gravitate towards the smaller one naturally, it makes perfect sense. And the bands, oh, the glorious bands. I'm actually really happy about the bands. So they have a bunch of different material options. They have leather, metal, rubber, and they have different clasps and buckle designs depending on how simple or elegant you want it to look. There's a sport band that's sweatproof and colorful. There's the leather loop that has freaking magnets like an iPad smart cover. It's brilliant, I love the bands, they're really awesome. But what's really going to make the bands important is the way they click in and click out. There's a really easily removable standard that Apple's created for Apple watch bands, and that's going to make the bands huge. You can already see third-party manufacturers now making other different materials and designs for watch bands, the same way they make different cases for the iPhone now. It has a starting price of $349, but that's just the base price, so that's probably the smallest face with the most basic band. So I'd expect to probably pay more like $400, to $450 for this watch, which is not cheap. But here's where the mixed emotion part comes in. The software, the knob, there's a dial, the knob looking thing on the side of the Apple Watch to interact with this new software. The watch senses that you're raising your wrist and then activates the display. You see an organization of apps that while new is somehow familiar. Navigation is fluid and vital. Magnifying content on a small display is fundamentally important. Pause, pause. Is it actually? Is it really though? Like, are we actually going to be showing people pictures on our watch instead of our phone? I don't know. So it's called the digital crown and it's this knob or wheel and button on the side of the Apple Watch that lets you move around inside watch apps. You can zoom and pen and scroll. And they make a huge deal out of this knob, uh, even though it's still a touchscreen watch, but it kind of reminds me of that BlackBerry. What was it? The BlackBerry uh, Pearl, which had a knob on the side to do everything, but that's because it needed it because it wasn't a touchscreen phone. I am really concerned though with this whole knob thing on the watch. First of all, it takes your interaction with the watch from this to this, or if you're lefty, one of these. And you know, for, if it's a knob, is it going to move around when I accidentally bump it? Might it start switching through and scrolling through things? If I cross my arms the wrong way, is it gonna scroll and select something? I don't really know. It's, it's hard to tell because I haven't actually played with it yet. The idea of it, and the reason why there's a knob there, is so you can interact with the watch without putting your finger over the display, which covers a lot of the stuff, and Apple doesn't want you to have to cover the display while you're using it. Even with the knob there, I think a lot of people who get this watch are gonna be using it as a touchscreen watch anyway. But that's the other thing. Even though it has the whole tap versus press sensitivity thing, the user interface is so much less finger friendly 
than the other smartwatch user interfaces. If you've seen my Android Wear smartwatch review video, you know, it's nice and big, all the notifications you can swipe through. Very, very simple stuff, even though your finger covers the screen. This is Apple's watch home screen. If you wanna know what's happening here, there are a bunch of app shortcuts to launch watch-specific apps, but I don't even think I wanna be doing that anyway if that's gonna be killing my watch battery. Here's my bottom line. If you take the Apple logo off of this and you just imagine it was made by some other company, Samsung, for example, and they come out and say, here is our revolutionary new watch. It's a square, it has a knob on the side, it has this really weird software, and it only works with our phones. You might have laughed it off the stage if that was a Samsung Galaxy Gear or whatever it was, but because it's an Apple Watch, we're willing to give it a shot, just willing to give it a try. It's technically not even out yet. They have till the beginning of next year when they release it, uh, and they say they've been working on it for years, but I guess they have a couple more months to get more revisions done with the software and the hardware, but I'm not convinced yet. Smartwatches as a whole have a lot of convincing to do. I'll talk more about that in my Moto 360 review, which is coming very soon, and I hope to get my hands on the Apple Watch soon and mess around with that too. But until then, very mixed feelings about this Apple Watch, and I'll keep my eye out for any improvements or impressions that come along in between now and early 2015. Until then, Feel free to give a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it, and a subscribe button is also below if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.